Okay. Um, I would like to thank the uh, organizer uh, for the invitation, especially Professor Doug Arnold. And uh, so originally I gave this uh, uh, title, how many numerical eigenvalues, actually PD numerical eigenvalues can we trust? And uh, the red one is a fa fancy title, how many, how well can you hear shape of drum by computer algorithm? That's uh, historically uh, in the pure math field, they, they have this uh, terminology, and uh, here the shape of the drum actually from the eigenvalue determine the domain. So, um, let's see. Okay, a uh, basic model I, I will consider here. Um, we have this uh, uh, so-called Schrodinger operator with the potential, inverse square potential here. And uh, uh, if C equals zero, that's Laplacian. And also the biharmonic model, but I will concentrate on this model. And uh, the same uh, theory applied to biharmonic and the related models. And uh, um, the fact, uh, this is uh, well known in the uh, 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 math uh, field. And the lambda, do you have infinite, uh, infinite amount of uh, lambda? And the first the single eigenvalue, a uh, single eigenmode, and then later on they may have some multiple eigenmodes. Excuse me, uh, is there a u missing in front of the potential? Is it the potential? It's a c square over x square times u. Oh yeah, u u. Sorry, uh, originally I have a parenthesis and the missing u there. Okay, thank you. There's a u there, of course. Mm -hmm. And originally it should be this parenthesis u outside, and uh, then. So this, uh, everybody familiar, this is uh, the first eigenmode of this uh, L-shaped domain. And the card here make it, it look uh, nice, actually, boundary value zero, okay? And uh, so the, I, I'm, I will say some story about it because we have a lot of physicists mm -hmm. and, uh, here and uh, about this uh, literature on, on this uh, eigenvalue problem. And uh, the... Issue here is uh, you use eigenvalue to determine the domain, and uh, the uh, so this uh, historically and uh, uh, puzzled mathematicians until 1992 actually solved this problem, and uh, uh, for for this uh, um, terminology because their paper used this very uh, fan, uh, fancy uh, mathematical terminology isospectral and isometric. Isospectral is uh, eigenvalue the same. Iso metric is the same domain. So if the eigenvalue same, domain is the same. Uh, the answer is, uh, the question is, is uh, about this. Actually, uh, there's a very popular paper and, uh, in 1966 about the in American Math Mathematical Monthly. And the CAC, he, he first used this terminology, can we hear the shape of drum? So that means, can we determine the domain by eigenvalues? So, and he made this topic very popular. And actually, as early as 1946, Borg already considered the first dimensional problem, 1D problem. But at that time, he didn't come up with this kind of a, a fancy name and make the issue popular. Because you have to say something. If you, you, you say to people like uh, isospectral, isometric, and it's too special. If you say here shape of domain, and almost everybody can understand. So that's that's he make this uh, issue very popular. And actually, something up uh, indeed audible. Audible means you can de determine something geometry of the domain by eigenvalues. So there's an expansion here. Is a you see this all eigenvalues here, and uh, so omega here uh, the bar is the area. L is the parameter, and uh, uh, R is the genus. That's how many holes you have. And if you think about it, if you have this one, you multiply both sides by T, and the set T go to zero, you have omega on this side. And they, this side, you de determine all the eigenvalues. You, you determine omega. And then the for, the, you can do this one by one. You determine parameter. And, the, and the later on, there's some uh, A, one half, A, two, uh, three half, and the et cetera. They determine this, uh, uh, relate to this uh, curvature and uh, some geometry of the domain. All right, so that's why something is uh, audible. But for mathematician, a drum can be n-dimensional. <laughs> we are talking about drum 2D. 
right? But uh, so that's uh, actually n-dimensional case settled in 1964 uh, by John Miller. Okay, so actually in in this this paper he he has a one counterexample, sixteen dimensional tori, and uh, two different sixteen dimensional tori has same spectrum, same eigenvalue. So that's counterexample, right? Sixteen dimensional actually settled very early. Oh, the, by the way, he's uh, uh, three, uh, I would say, Fields Medal and the Wolf Prize, uh, Albert. Uh, Ibel Prize, and uh, only four and five people get this, all three. I say five, uh, four and five, four and half, because uh, uh, was Andrew uh, Wells, right? He got uh, all these, but the field metal is silver. It's, so I say I count half. So, and all mathematicians only four and a half, right? And he, he got this one. But, uh, so he visited the Wayne State in uh, 2006, and he gave a talk. I asked him about this, uh, this uh, how he came up with this one. Because the paper only one page. I I, I dig out this paper. I cannot understand. <laughs> it's very hard to read. So I asked him. He said, "Oh, this is just a byproduct." So <laughs> he he didn't explain what was uh, he did something else and the byproduct solved this problem. But anyway. And uh, can you hear the density of string? This involved a one-dimensional problem. And the V, given uh, the eigenvalues of this one, so we, we are, in this group, we are very familiar with this operator. And the V is the potential. And the uh, previous talk about the V is the random potential, right? It gave a lot of uh, computations there. And actually, uh, uh, 1946, Borg already gave a counterexample. So, if you, you know all the eigenvalues there, and actually you can, you can have all different V, and the V is an infinite many. So, and for the quantum uh, uh, interaction, the quantum mechanics from scat scattering experience, can you hear the strength of the interaction? So this uh, uh, inverse spectral uh, theory. And if we look at this eigenvalue, and this, uh, for this operator, Oh, maybe I use this better. Oh, so still you cannot determine the though. You even you know all the eigenvalues, you cannot determine this uh, potential. So uh, actually, uh, in 1949, and the mathematician solved this problem. And actually, a lot of people working on this believe you can you can do that. And uh, it's, it's really it's bloody there. <laughs> okay, now. The answer is you can't you you cannot hear the shape of the drum. So this uh, paper that's why I, I put the terminology there, uh, isospectral. See, this is a very uh, mathematical uh, professional word there, and actually it tells you even you know all the eigenvalues you cannot determine the domain. So that's the and uh, later on uh, this they write a very more popular paper. See, these are very rigorous proof there. And here they write a popular paper and they say that uh, you cannot hear the shape of drum. And uh, this guy put in this paper in science. So if a mathematic uh, result put in science, I would, wouldn't say this is not un very unusual, but this is not, not very common, right? And so this makes this popular. Here is the paper. And uh, the, these are two first two authors there, and Gordon, the lady. And the web, and actually they are couple. <laughs> but the use last name, I, I believe, maybe I guess, uh, when they married, the lady already published many papers. So if you uh, change last name, it's very hard to, to get the uh, right. But anyway, so that's the counter example, and we don't need any uh, mathematical proof that uh, your your naked eyes can tell you this different, very different domain. But they have identical eigenvalues, all of them. So that's a counter example. And uh, so later on, they come up as uh, simpler. Uh, so far, I think that's uh, simply connected domain, that's the most simple counter example in this business. And uh, if you, of course, I, I know this result in, uh, back in 1995 because uh, Gordon gave a talk at Texas Tech University when I was assistant professor there. And uh, why he gave a talk there? And, uh, because 
we hired his student, Ruth Cornell. <laughs> and uh, the first year, he invited his uh, uh, advisor to give this talk. So it's many years. And if you you not uh, required just one domain, and actually you have a pair of domain, these two pairs, if you you can think about it, you can make a uh, drum and a bomb, hit them together, they sound the same. So as a pair of the domain, they have the uh, same eigenvalues. So, and then actually two dimensional cases, the most difficult cases, because in actually in historically 16 dimensional solve the first and then five and above, and then three and the last two. Uh, three, uh, uh, then four and five. Three not uh, result, uh, result via the solve the two, because if you, you have a two, you make a tensor product on the other domains, uh, the di dimension, you solve the problem. So two is the most difficult one. Okay, um, actually there's possible answers for this problem, and if you have a, uh, a, a bounded, uh, you, you have a very smooth domain, you have some symmetry, and the eigenvalue can determine eigen, uh, uh, can determine the domain. So. The, 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 the point is you have to have some, some kind of a, a restriction. And now the guess is, conjecture is, you can f hear the shape of the convex domain drum. So what that means? If you, you have a convex restriction, then eigenvalue can determine the domain. So far, all counterexamples, they are not convex. There's corner singularity there. So the guess is that, but the, uh, the positive proof only have a, a, infinite, a C infinity uh, boundary and some symmetry. But uh, this is not, not solved issue yet, even theoretically. So there are, I, I mentioned two open problems related to this, uh, this stuff. One is the so-called hilbert polya conjecture. And the zeros of the, the zeta function on the critical line, mm, one half, real z equals one half, maybe the eigenvalues of some uh, Hilbert operator, uh, Hermit operator. Uh, so this is a, uh, the gas conjecture, right? And I, I, I check the literature, say, if uh, somebody say, okay, Hilbert mentioned this, but uh, and, uh, and you cannot find uh, some solid, um, solid evidence of the Hilbert set, something like that. But uh, they, they, any, anyhow, historically, this uh, is called Hilbert Polias conjecture. And actually, and you can see the eigenvalue is a very deep business because uh, some, somehow relate to this uh, <laughs> Riemann conjecture. And uh, of course, as Mon Montgomery, there's a story. Actually, Montgomery met uh, Dyson in uh, Princeton and they talk about the, this uh, so-called uh, random matrices. That's the business of uh, uh, Dyson. And, uh, they, they mentioned uh, this, uh, and because Mangari said there's this correlation of, uh, of this kind of a uh, uh, correlation function, and Dyson, Dyson told him this is a um, Riemann function, uh, Riemann zeta function has something similar. And then he, he went back, get, uh, did some computation, and actually later on, on, on this uh, line, people uh, on this line did some commutation to, do, to find it. Riemann zeta zeros, based on this uh, correlation function here. And uh, but anyway, so let's let's uh, go back to uh, an, oh another one. So this actually uh, I I check the literature and you know we know uh, people already know the second uh, eigenvalue I mean Laplacian operator over the first eigenvalue. Uh, it's maximized by a disk. So. But the third eigenvalue over the first eigenvalue, and which domain, what kind of domain maximize this ratio, is not known. So among all sides, over all two-dimensional domains. Right, this is disk uh, maximize this ratio. I don't understand my question. Among the words. Among the words. Open all open sides and three D? Uh, all open sides, yes. Uh, finite domain. Okay, now, eigenvalue computation is not an easy task. Actually, you can compute eigenvalues on the polygonal domain, and uh, there's a 
popular online, you can find this uh, PL. MG, uh, PLTMG adaptive fine element, and you can find uh, PD2 box. And actually, in 1997, uh, uh, Driscoll uh, wrote a science review paper and they used this to try to uh, solve this eigenvalues, find eigenvalues of th those two domains, right? Uh, this, uh, these two. Yeah, just these two domains. And because it's, uh, mathematically you prove this, uh, they have all the eigenvalues same, but uh, you, nobody, <laughs> there's a no closed form for eigenvalues. You have to do it computationally. So, and he did, uh, did this computation, and he did this computation, and, uh, and uh, this uh, software can only give you three, four digit accurate for first two or 20 eigenvalues, and he, he Use uh, uh, some uh, other method to solve, uh, get, get 15, uh, 14 digit accuracy, uh, accuracy for first 20 eigenvalues. All right, we need to do, do, do more. So let's uh, go back to finite element business. If you use finite element method, you, you, you put it in this variational form, and the Laplacian operator, biharmonic operator, and the every second order, fourth order elliptic operator, you can put in this kind of form. And uh, then you, you transfer, put piecewise polynomial in it, you transfer this to, to uh, uh, algebraic, generalized algebraic eigenvalue problems. This matrix is called the uh, uh, stiff matrix, this is called the mass matrix, and you have a numerical eigenvalue there. You solve this, you have a numerical eigenvalue. Now, the issue I'm con considering here is the following. Uh, standard assumption apply and we will see a smoothness domain, quasi-uniform mesh, and shape regular mesh, and all this uh, stuff. So I would like to avoid all the technical details, and we see in the best scenario case, right? All the issues, and how, how well we can find the numerical eigenvalue. See, here we have an algebraic uh, numerical eigenvalue problem. And uh, our target is the uh, PD eigenvalue problem. So PD eigenvalue problem, we have infin infinite many eigenvalues. And here we have finite dimensional case. And for, of course, how well this finite dimensional, finite dimensional eigenvalues, eigenmode can approximate theoretical ones, right? And uh, so even you, you solve this accurately, and we, we don't see the, we ignore the round off error, all this stuff, uh, this condition number, and you, you just solve it accurately. So some basic facts, both matrices, um, stiffness matrix and mass matrix, they are positive definite. That's the best case in numerical linear algebra. And uh, there are n positive eigenvalues, right? And uh, also from the, if, from Rayleigh quotient and the minimap pr principle, we, if you use finite element conforming case and the eigenvalue approximate from above, the infinite dimensional minimum and uh, right less than finite dimensional minimum <coughs> so apparently from about and uh, of course some non conforming element uh, there's a theoretical that lot of discussion there <coughs> uh, approximate eigenvalue from below but that's the not the case here and uh, so historically we already know that only a small portion of the eigenvalues are reliable actually when i was in uh, maryland maryland in 1990 uh, 1986, when I met Babushka, my advisor, he, he mentioned this problem, and he said, okay, uh, you, you guys always compute the first eigenvalues. How about uh, 100? How can you say about that? So th this uh, problem in my mind is for many years, and uh, so actually uh, I, I talked to some engineers, and the engineer, there's a common sense, of course, okay, 30% eigenvalues you can trust, or 20%. And nobody can give you accurate answer. In what sense? So here, under the most favorable situation, how many numerical eigenvalues are uh, reliable? And in what sense? In what sense is important? OK, let's start from one-dimensional case. Uh, this is a, actually one-dimensional case that uh, qualitatively gave you almost all the information there. The general theory. It's very similar. So, so for, for this one, and uh, it's, uh, it's clear, uh, eigenvalues, uh, lambda, uh, 
lambda j j pi squared. You see, in one d, the eigenvalue magnitude of eigenvalue grows as a j squared, i squared, k squared, or n squared, squared. And in two d, increase as n. All right. So, so this is a. Uh, if you use a finite element, you have this one, and uh, this uh, negative one, two, negative one. That's a, a second order. Uh, the the, the dif uh, finite difference scheme for second de de derivative here, and the U. This is a math matrix. Uh, if you uh, put identity matrix here, this finite difference, and the infinite element business is called mass lumping. You put everything in the, on the on the diagonal line. All right, and here one for one. Here is a six. You see this is a mass mass matrix, and we we have n minus one times n minus one linear system because. Two and zero, we have n n uh, intervals, and h times n equals one, so uniform mesh. So you can you can literally compute eigenvalues, and uh, in in uh, Babushka and Osborne's uh, paper, and the 1991 paper, you have this uh, this stuff, right? And uh, and actually, I, I later on I compute a triangle. And they compute uh, this. Uh, this uh, for two D case, you can compute triangle, rectangle, and so. But this one is is very uh, uh, clear. You can you can ha have something here. Oh, by the way, you see, I, as I mentioned earlier, these uh, two symmetric positive definite matrices. You can orthogonal diagonalize them simultaneously. So that's that's why you can you can compute eigenvalues pretty easily from from that one, and you see you you have an asymptotic expansion here. This is the first the first term is the exact eigenvalue, and you can see from here the the uh, convergence rate h squared, it is h squared here. Nevertheless, when j grows, and this thing about the j equals n n minus the last one, what happened? You have a disaster. You have a fourth power here. And the j times uh, n times h equals one, so this will not convert, right? So, of course, mass lumping is like this, and uh, that's the equivalent of finite difference. And uh, you can see approximately from below. <laughs> this uh, the first term the same, but the second term with the opposite sign. Okay, of course, in, in this case, and you see that you do uh, averaging, you have a fourth order convergence. This actually is a post processing. You can you have some better result. And uh, so let's uh, let's see how uh, I, I would say how many numerical eigenvalues you can trust. So for the, for this one you can see very clearly what the, let's compute the last one. So last one is n minus one, right? And to compute the last one is easy from that uh, expansion, and uh, you have uh, twelve uh, n squared minus nine pi squared. And you can compute uh, mass lumping, right? And, uh, or finite difference compute the last one. You have a four n squared minus pi. Squared. Pi squared. See a quite big difference between these two, and the true one is is this one n minus one pi squared, right? And uh, about uh, ten n squared. So the absolute value and uh, uh, and you can you can even compute the middle one, right? And uh, if you put n equals the even number, and you compute compute the middle one, that's what you get three n squared and the n squared. So. Comparing the, to, to the numerical, uh, the true one, and this is just sitting between of these two. Now, so the absolute value error in the magnitude of n squared, that's absolute error. So the middle one and the last one you cannot trust is uh, too far away uh, off. Okay, now let's see how many uh, you can trust, and uh, we, we do this following trick. And without the loss of generality, let's uh, s uh, be a factor of n. So if you have, uh, we are talking about uh, 100, 1000, right? We are not to say 101, and you don't have factor. And uh, we, we, we say 100, 1000, you have factor, okay? And then, in that case, you can, you can say, uh, then j is n over s. If j equals n over s, you put it here, because I want to get this n out to, to, to cancel this h, and we'll see the, the, the result. So this term is, is there. The second term, and there's a fourth uh, power and the sixth power, right? And uh, let's compute the relative error, cancel the, re, uh, the influence of n. So this is a true solution. We know the numerical solution bigger, so this minus this will be positive. 
and then you divide by the uh, this, uh, two uh, solution, and what, that's what you get. You get that the first term is uh, uh, the error is h squared. You have this term and h fourth and so on. And of course, for uh, finite difference mass lumping, approximately from below, so you use a true eigenvalue minus numerical eigenvalue. So that's what you, what you had, have. Okay, now let's uh, start from here. If, if we, we want this uh, quadratic convergence, quadratic convergence means what? You see this uh, error term is, is there, and the quadratic convergence uh, is, is uh, uh, so in, in, in here, right? Now, quadratic convergence means I need this to be as somewhere in the same range as n, right? This quadratic, because n, 1 over n is h, something like that, right? h squared will be 1 over n squared. So that means s should be in the same magnitude as n. So if a factor s is the same magnitude as n, what that means? That means you have only a couple of eigenvalues, right? And the same magni magnitude. So n over s is O over 1. That means we only have a, a, a few qualified for co quadratic convergence. However, if you, you relax the convergence rate, I, I only ask linear convergence. Linear convergence, and in, if uh, start from here, if you want the linear convergence 1 over s squared in the some range of 1 over n, s will be square root of n, right? In that case, you have a more. So about the square root of n, this may be qualified. All right, if you, you reduce your, your relax your, your requirement, I, I only ask linear convergence, I have a more square root of n. And so on. You can, you can. If you further reduce, I don't even want the linear convergence. I want the h one half or h one third or whatever. You, you have more. So that's uh, basically from this example. That's the case. Okay. Of course, we uh, earlier I mentioned this uh, uh, averaging, so 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 called extrapolation, right? You can do the averaging. You have a fourth order. Indeed, this has uh, some uh, some improvement to your eigenvalue. So they, then you have 1 over a s fourth. So in that case, if you want to uh, quadratic, you, you, you have a square root n this many. All right? So this is a really uh, this kind of a com uh, the averaging or extrapolation gave you some advantage. And you, you can achieve the higher order convergence by uh, just do the simple average. And so let's consider the middle one and the uh, last one with this averaging, and this middle one is uh, relative error 1.3 percent, and the last one still like almost 19 percent, so it still doesn't work. So, so this average, so what do you think is a, in general is a general error for trick? Oh, uh, in general is a is a you if you have some symmetry, and one below one up, but the this, this special case, usually you don't have this luck, you get the fourth order. You, you have something uh, post-processing, and uh, if you're not lucky enough, still same convergence rate, but uh, improve the constant. But this is extreme case. The, uh, the main major error term just canceled. All right? So even after averaging, there's still you, you're way off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not following. What, what is the averaging? You're taking the approximation you did before, and then you have the superscript L. What, what's the other thing that you're averaging? Oh, uh, so this is a finite yeah. element. This yes. is a finite difference. The mass lumping. Uh, remember oh, the oh, matrix. The, two, the, the, the right. upper and the lower right. bound. Right. Averaging right. the upper and the lower, lower right. bound. Um, um, right. right. Okay. Because All right. the major uh, error, is one is positive, one is negative. Yeah. Same constant. So okay. just cancel. That's a very lucky yeah. uh, situation. Usually you don't have this, uh, this luck. Uh, so, even even after this average, still you, you, you don't have, uh, uh, yeah. you cannot trust this, this result. And uh, uh, remember, we, we are talking about uh, relative error. This is already in the magnitude n squared. So if you ca ca consider absolute value, this uh, absolute error, this times n squared. So, so you're, you're saying you can't trust it, but, but can one rigorously prove in some family of examples that you actually do get within 1%? I mean, I know that's not maybe not what numerical mm, analysts no, no, do. No. So this is a special case. Uh, yeah, it's an you, example. Right, example. But in general case, 
because this uh, lambda increase as as in one d as n squared and in two d as n, and this relative error you times n n squared is still very large. In general, oh, I will say right, it's something. large, but I'm right. just curious whether you can get a rigorous result. Oh, like this? No, with, a, with, right. a, with, with not, this kind not of convergence, but with right. just a which right. Is with just the a percentage re result is not, but the qualitatively you can you can have we have result in your right. Is it fair to rephrase it in exactly upside down? Mm -hmm. In other words, if you want a given number of eigenvalues to give an accuracy, mm -hmm. this dictates the size of the matrix. Yes, it can be much much larger. Right. Exactly. That's exactly the point. You need much, much larger. Not 20%, not 30%. Actually, if you want to get, uh, say, um, linear convergence, right, you need uh, 100, first 100 eigenvalues, linear convergence. You need 100 squared, so 10,000. And if you need 1,000, you need 1 million size of eigen, the, the matrices. Okay? Right. It's a complexity now. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's, uh, when the absolute uh, number of eigenvalue you, you asked uh, to accurate to the linear convergence, you need the matrix to be uh, square of this number. So it's, uh, any percentage is not fixed. So a general theory is like this. Um, it's, it's very... Uh, it's, it's just uh, how... Under the most favorable situation, how the this many reliable numerical eigenvalues with a relative error converts as h to the power l. And uh, so that's uh, if you, you change alpha to, uh, you see, quadratic, this will be 0, right? And uh, over 1. And uh, linear, you have a better case. But uh, that's a general theory. And uh, in, in the second, 2m order, uh, in 2m order, elliptic operator, that's in, in any dimensional, that's the general theory, because uh, this theory depends on a lot of uh, uh, previously, um, uh, so that's uh, the paper uh, in there, details there. I, I, I just say something about uh, uh, the proof of theory, need a lot of uh, previous result, and uh, the first one is uh, just uh, uh, this uh, so-called wireless law, right? Uh, each eigenvalue is, uh, is, uh, is like this, asymptotically. This uh, already in the first talk, um, Professor Arnold already mentioned this, this Wallace law. But the Wallace law is uh, uh, this, this, this. Uh, of course, that's uh, you know the volume, of the unit wall, right, in the R D. That's any dimensional for Laplacian operator. And uh, this asymptotic uh, only see, say uh, is uh, not uh, is. Uh, Okay, it's like this. As in hard data, you can n squared plus n over n squared goes to one, but there's a difference in n there, very big one. So uh, later on, actually, uh, for the tiling domain, the poly proof uh, this actually lower bound. <coughs> the number is lower bound. It's not asymptotic. Uh, it's uh, just uh, oscillate. It's lower bound. And of course, if you square this, you have a biharmonic operator. This is proved. This is square of this, just by biharmonic operator. Yeah. Okay. Then the second tool is for uh, oh, the, the, let's say something about this uh, wireless law. And uh, so far, the best known result for arbitrary domain. The see, this is a tiling domain, right? This tiling domain. And for arbitrary domain, I can find is a 1982 paper Yao. And uh, so the first n uh, eigenvalues has this bound, this d is dimension. Okay, so <coughs> you, if you can, uh, you get the first one, you, you get this one. Uh, this one, you get this one. So this one is a d is if one d that's off by uh, one third, two d off by one half. So it's very close already. Uh, and there's a constant there. And uh, so. Another one is from Strand Fix, 1973 paper, and uh, there's a, a proof of uh, the eigenvalue uh, is uh, conforming from above, right, the larger than zero. So less than or equal h to k minus m, and then this eigenvalue here. All right. So the 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 error bound depends on the eigenvalue. The larger the eigenvalue, <laughs> the larger the eigen, uh, error bound. So if you, you get the last eigenvalue, the error bound means nothing.
So then is a uh, uh, Babushka Oden's <coughs> 1989 paper, and actually they gave the both upper bound and lower bound by this uh, uh, character by this uh, 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 quantity. All right. So under the same assumption as in the uh, the pre pre previous one, this one, and we can have uh, uh, this estimate, and also lower bound. 90, uh, 90 general case you can prove this lower bound. So uh, then combine all this together, this is really characterized by this uh, constant. This constant not depend on lambda, not depend on h, but this there's a here. So based on this, we can get uh, our uh, uh, answer. So let's uh, see some special case. Okay, special case for the second order uh, problem and the linear element k equals two. So this uh, I, linear element k equals two because the strand fix the uh, book, they, they use k equals two as a linear element, the k minus one. So uh, I, I do not uh, uh, directly quote, cite their uh, result and then you follow their uh, notation. Otherwise, it's very confusing. And also, this this notation is a so-called uh, uh, Cornell notation, right? In the last and in the class, they use this kind of notation. And uh, there are about n one minus uh, alpha over two numerical eigenvalues converge at least with the rate of h alpha. Now, if alpha equals two. This is a general case, all right? And the earlier, I, I gave you a numerical example, one-dimensional case. In general case, that's, that's also true. M equals one, that's a Laplace, or second-order elliptic operator. And all feels, feel, because uh, strong fix theory, Babushka Osman theory, uh, apply to any 2M-dimensional elliptic operator, okay? So now, for alpha equals two, that's only N of zero eigenvalues qualified, so that's uh, uh, that means uh, just a few, right? So what, whatever we, we observe from one-dimensional situation is, uh, is the same in the high-dimensional situation than the general 2M, 2M operator. And then for linear rate, R equals 1, we have square root of n numerical eigenvalues qualified. So, and for quadratic element, k equals 3, and this is improved better. So if you want to... Uh, Fourth order, uh, optimal convergence order, you have correct, you have four, fourth order convergence for uh, eigenvalues optimal. But uh, this is the n, uh, n to zero. It's <coughs> only a few qualified. But uh, for quadratic element, you want a quadratic rate, and you have a, like square root n, right? That's square root n. So this constant is uh, two uh, dimension. This is doesn't matter. The ma major part is here. So. You can, you can see the same idea here. If you want a higher convergence rate, you have only uh, optimal convergence, you have only few. If you low down your convergence rate requirement, you have many. But the, the point is, see, even for the second order, uh, second order uh, elliptic op operator, and, uh, so if you use a linear element, and you even, even you want a linear rate convergence square root n, that's what you get. So uh, I will show you uh, one. Uh, this uh, we, we can skip this one. This is for the, the very similar thing. Uh, M equals two. This uh, typical uh, example is the biharmonic operator, two M operator, right? And the two M. Uh, so very similar stuff. I I, I skip this part. And uh, let's see uh, two examples. Uh, so I will make my point. Uh, so this was the first example we already I already showed you and uh, use linear and uh, linear element and the finite difference you can solve it numerical approximation spectral method with the basis functions as uh, Lobato polynomials Lobato polynomials in integrals of Lorander polynomials so you take the derivative you have Lorander and in that case actually you have a diagonal stiffness matrix so if that's the case and we compare with the same degree of freedom n equals 8192. So for finite element, finite difference, you have this many uh, uh, intervals. And the, for, for, uh, for this uh, spectral method, I use one interval, one interval with the 8912 degree polynomial. All right? So 8192 degree polynomial scare people. Oh, Polynomial oscillate, right? But, but the thing about the, the 
la lambda polynomial orthogonal, you have a diagonal stiffness matrix. There's no instability, no uh, the, the condition number issue. And your mass matrix, mass matrix is very stable. The condition number, number is very small. And uh, five diagonal, actually three diagonal because uh, two of diagonal zero, symmetric. So, so let's compare with the linear element and the uh, uh, finite difference, right? And the same degree of freedom. This is the same degree of freedom. And uh, so the spectral method, there's a uh, theory in the, in the literature actually in 1988. Uh, Traveson has a paper. And uh, the spectral method about the pi over 2 over pi n, this many numerical eigenvalues, you can reach uh, this percent of relative error based on the theory, because this percent relative error is basically 1 over 9A12, right? So 1 over 2 is 10, over 10,000, this 1 over 1, 10,000, about in that range, okay? So I'm targeted on the linear convergence. Remember, our theory is that linear convergence, you have square root of n you can trust, linear, with the linear convergence, right? And so linear convergence in this case, if n equals this, 1 over... Uh, uh, linear is uh, just uh, uh, 1 over square root n, the square root of this number, right? And the square root of this number. So, now, for finite and finite difference, based on the theory, you have, if you, you have this kind of linear convergence rate, you have square root n about uh, 8,192, about 91 numerical eigenvalues reach this. So, to the spectrum, there's a pi over, uh, 2 over pi, almost, so one, almost one third. This many numerical eigenvalues can be this, but the finite element, finite difference only this. See, they have the same degree of freedom, right? So you're, you're, you're not just using this model. You're saying a diagonal matrix is, is the, the stiffness matrix is diagonal, and the other one is maybe has five. Five diagonal. It's five wide. Right. right. So the, the model is just to illustrate. It's not, the, 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 the theorem is the hypothesis is in red mm -hmm. in this yeah. line. Oh, just, no, no. Just there is a diagonal, is in a five diagonal. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's so the top it's line is right. it's just a very, very special case. Right, very special case. Right. I, I okay. just want to compare yeah. no, uh, no. finite yeah. difference. Yeah. No, I, 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 no, I just want to Even sure if you I are understand. taking, say, not the Laplace operator, but something more complicated, mm. you will not have five diagonal, but they will decay very right. far. Far very yes. fast, yeah. but yeah. the point yeah. is that on the on the left hand side you only yeah. have the diagonal yes. matrix. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, this is because of orthogonality. That's yeah. what yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's why you call it the, the spectral method. Yes. Because yeah. of the, the right. Well, <laughs> this is a, uh, this is a, the, the 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 left being diagonal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but this is not why. Right. Well, okay. Right. We can talk right. about it later. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'll be yeah. Curious. Okay. Yes. And here is the graph. You see. Um, I draw two vertical lines. This is a 2n over pi, theoretically predicted line. And here is the square root of n, 90.5. Actually, this is a vertical line here. And the, the blue one finite element, black one finite, uh, blue one uh, finite difference, black one finite element. And you see this, uh, uh, this horizontal line is just relative error 0 0.012 percent. That's 1 over 8,192. So this linear convergence. So about the, the theory predicted about square root of n can get linear convergence. So you can see this uh, this line just cross passing this cross line of the, this vertical and horizontal. So after that, and the, uh, nine, 91 above the numerical eigenvalue, the error getting large, right? And the, this is not a random error here. This a random error is this small and it's getting large. And here, and the uh, vertical line here is the, the, of, about the 2n over pi, 5,000. So for spectral method, about 5,000, you can get uh, like a 10 to the negative 12 accuracy. And then, and you, you shoot up immediately from here and uh, go up. Now, let's uh, look, at, uh, look at about this, this uh, line. This theoretically prediction is very accurate in, in this 1D case. And uh, so, this spectral method that behaves like this. You see the error here is goes up. And but but the think about it, we have a 90, uh, 9, 8,192 eigenvalues, eigenmode. And we want to approximate infinite many. So what spectral method did is the following. It did, okay, the first uh, 
about 5,000 is a very accurate uh, approximate, the loyally approximate first 5,252 huh. eigenvalues, right? And then later on, the way off, because this tail try to match the rest larger eigenvalues, because think about the eigenvalue goes infinity when n increase. So this is not one by one, it's, it's maybe here, the, for the spectral method, the number 8,192 eigenvalue maybe want to match 80,000 eigenvalue there. So it's not one by one, then the later on want to catch more in the later case. So that's the, the, the behavior like this. So spectral method... So there's also a jump at the tail. Okay. Yes, jump at the tail. Right. I mean the other, the other way, near zero. So the red yeah. ones are yeah. Oh, yeah, this is dumb. The first, the first field is a, is a numerical yeah. round off stuff. Yeah. 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 Also, yeah. 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 it's from negative nine, right? Yes, that's true. There's a, there's a numerical round off error there. Is it because you're taking a relative error? Relative error, yes. You divide by a smaller Right, number. right. D divide by a smaller number, yes, yes, relative error. You are correct. So, so that, that this uh, tells us, okay, uh, for the if you use for eigenvalue business and the, 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 the I, I said so so called take home message is uh, if possible use use high <coughs> order method because eigenvalue high eigenmode oscillate mm -hmm. and uh, high order polynomial oscillate. If you use piecewise linear to to approximate high oscillate functions, not not very efficient. So this is a 2D case. And the 2D we, 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 we did here is a dimension, two-dimensional model is, a, this also you can compute an exact eigenvalues, you can compare. Now, we have a random spectral method with the basic functions close as a tensor product of Lobato uh, polynomials of degree up to 4096. So this is 12 to the power 13, right? <laughs> okay, you use the uh, power. So now, this time, like, like you mentioned earlier, we don't have a diagonal uh, stiff matrix. Instead, we have a block diagonal. The block, block. And at in, in the same time, you, you have a the smash mass matrix, the block five diagonal mass matrix. Okay? And then compare with the linear quadratic element, uh, this time I put the even quadratic element there, and the finite difference with the same degree freedom. And uh, now this, this time, degree freedom is 16. Uh, more than 16 uh, million, right? Because we have a square here. And uh, uh, so we also want to 0 0.01 random error. This is for a finite element that's a linear, right? And in this time, spectral method is pi over 2 squared, not pi over 2. 1D is pi over 2. If 3D, that's cube, and so on, right? This many. So if this time is about 40%. And for finite element, finite difference, you, you have uh, this um, 0 0.5n square root, because this uh, reduced half, so I, I put this number here. About this many, and uh, reach this, this, still there's a square root 2 here, right? This square root 2 here. Okay, for quadratic element, I, I mentioned the theory, you have a quadratic element, this is about the n to the power 2 over 3 in 2D. So that's about uh, 0 0.74, less than 1%. So that's the theoretical theory, theory you can predict. Let's see, see the graph. So. This relative error, uh, 0 0.024, that's uh, 4,090, 1 over 4,096, right? That's uh, just a double of the earlier one. This is the line. And uh, so about this red line in here, about 40%. This is just like theory predicted. And here, uh, finite and finite difference is 0 0.03, and uh, this, is, this is a tiny little bit here. And, uh, for quadratic element, it increases dramatically. Actually, you see, you can see the higher order method in eigenvalue business performs better. You see, even uh, linear to quadratic, you, you improve a, a lot, and so on. Okay. Same deg de uh, degree of freedom, and uh, so let's see what we have learned. And uh, we have learned. Large numerical, so some take home message, right? And the large numerical eigenvalues <coughs> converge slower than smaller ones. That's a clear, because the convergence uh, error bound depends on eigenvalue itself. 
only a small portion of numerical eigenvalues are reliable. The percentage of reliable numerical values decreases when total degree freedom increases, although the number of reliable numerical eigenvalues increases. So percentage decreases. I, like, like I mentioned, if you have linear convergence, you want 100, you need 10,000. Right? If you have linear convergence, you, you, you target on 1,000, you need 1 million. So 100 to one, uh, 10,000 is 1%. One, uh, 1%. But 1,000 to 1 million, that's 0.1%. Percentage decreases, right? But absolute value is still 100, 1,000 increase. So this is not a fixed percentage, like uh, many years, uh, engineers believe that 30%, 25%, no, not the case, all right? And uh, if optimal rate of convergence is designed, optimal, <coughs> I mean optimal convergence rate, only a first few numerical eigenvalues qualify regardless of finite element spaces, right? Optimal. <coughs> so this is uh, called finite element. Uh, if regular regularity permits, higher order method provide more reliable numerical eigenvalues. Therefore, it is advantageous to use superconvergence techniques and the high, high accuracy in numerical method. And earlier I talked with uh, you know, Professor Doug Arnold uh, said, okay, earlier uh, his uh, computation for, for use cubic element, he said now, it, it changed to 10 by 10, the 10 degree polynomial, polynomial, polynomial basically it's back that in the, each, each, uh, each uh, potential. Okay, uh, all right, earlier mentioned uh, Jin Chao will work on the two grid, two space, and the two grid. Actually, uh, my student tested the two space method is so for eigenvalue problem is more effective in two grid because you can see the, the, the higher order uh, method works well. Okay, now, strategy to improve uh, accuracy. At the PDE, the uh, discretization level, high order methods such as spectral method use whenever it's possible, right? Sometimes it's impossible because it is all the, the domain and the singularity, the, the, the very complex domain. And the con uh, constructing a special non Fourier, non polynomial basis function, I will mention this in the next example, super convergence post uh, techniques, and so on. Of course, there's an issue of resulting algebraic system level. So we are talking about the PD distribution level, right? And uh, for large system, algebraic system solving is also is a, we, we have a, uh, like a conference in uh, numerical uh, eigenvalue problem. Some folks from the algebraic uh, linear algebraic system, they, 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 you, you you need to work on the solver actually. Uh, so let's uh, do, uh, see this problem. For this problem, particular problem, we use non, you see the every circle here, and the uh, corner singularity, in this region, we use non-polynomial basis function to specially treat singularity there. Of course, and by, by doing so, the, the other one, and the use, uh, outside the, these places, you just use uh, high order polynomials, just, uh, uh, just regular uh, spectral method. Right? And uh, so. It, it, is it because they're 45 degree right angles that you're missing some corners? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just because it's right angles and 45 degrees? Right. That's no, no. The very weak singularity. Yeah. yeah. And, and then also 45 yeah, degrees. That's, that's yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. These are good. And uh, is, uh, they, they, these are yeah, re entrant corners of back. Right. All right? And uh, so in, in this way, and uh, we use 4,457 degree freedom to obtain 14-digit accuracy for the first 25 eigenvalues. So if you use uh, finite element, and uh, uh, you, you want, want to get 14 degree for this, uh, this domain, is uh, almost impossible. But you can try. <laughs> so uh, with the paper, you can check the details in the paper. All right? So the point is here, and use uh, specially designed basis functions, spectral basis functions, non-polynomial basic function in this, in this special region. The other places just use polynomial. So this actually, this one is a, I think is a better strategy than HP. And I will show you. So of course, this is a numerical data. You can, you can count. We have a two different uh, uh, spectral method uh, com compared with the discourse uh, 1997. We have a better result here. 14 digits for all 25. So 
let me say something on the effective and the efficiency. Comparing with the state of art method, sparse structure of matrix of mass matrices, small degree freedom. We use 4,475 degree freedom. And also, so this is a, a theoretical issue. And uh, for state of art, and uh, I, I, uh, I know this result the very early HP version. If you design your mesh towards the singularity with the best, optimal, the best strategy, and uh, uh, the polynomial distribution, the most inner layer is a P equals 1, and the second layer P equals 2, and go up. So this design is a uh, Babushika and uh, uh, Ben Chi Guo. They did in 19, uh, late 1980s and early 1990s. And uh, so theoretical rate is this e to the power uh, sigma 2 cubic root degree freedom. So I, I asked uh, uh, at that time, what's the 3D case? I was told it's uh, e to the negative sigma uh, one-fifth root of degree freedom. So 2D is one-third degree uh, root of degree freedom, 3D is one-fifth, it's kind of weird. And in our case, 2D is just one-half. And 3D is just one-third. It's very, and I believe this is a theoretical barrier is here. And this is still, HP still cannot reach the theoretically best numeric uh, versus the degree freedom. And I think we, we hit the theoretical lower bound. <laughs> hit this value, okay? And uh, so, so this one uh, is not for, uh, for Laplacian, for the uh, uh, potential with the inverse uh, square potential, we, uh, we all can get this one. 3D, we get uh, one third, yeah, right? So this is, a, uh, I suppose, the last page. And let me see if I have, yeah, my time is up, right? Okay? All right, thank you.